Oh yeah. Hey everybody, Qui-Gon Jin here, bringing you another top five video. Today's video is going to be about top five non-formulaic badass stories in video games. A couple quick rules, no AAA titles, no games I've already done in many of my previous videos. Well, with that in mind, let's get into it. This video is dedicated to a new story-driven game coming out tomorrow called Firewatch, a dialogue explorative story by Campo Santo. It's set in the Wyoming forest of 1989. You play Henry, who seems like a real and complicated person with a problematic past and reasons for wanting to be isolated in the wilderness as a watchtower guard. Soon, a mystery ensues that promises to sweep you up in wonderment, curiosity, and even fear. First-person puzzle-based explorative game with a narrative story through walkie-talkies and dialogue trees that have seemingly real consequences to what you say, or even if you don't speak at all. This game looks to make you think extremely introspectively and has deep themes of loss, guilt, mystery, and consequence. The very definition of a story-driven game. Now let's get on with it. Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery. The orchestral score from Jim Guthrie, a Canadian musician whose work drew the attention and producers of indie game The Movie. The game breaks the fourth wall almost immediately with the archetype as he tells you the story of a strong female warrior Scythian. As you traverse the game, you will experience many beautiful details that can be manipulated strictly for immersion purposes, like babbling brooks and other surroundings I won't spoil for you. Funny present day writing, but deep dark, heavy music balance each other out so that the game never feels too heavy-handed. Gameplay is more discovery than difficult combat, more of a moody click-and-point adventure than a tough combat RPG, even though it does have some simplified two-button combat accompanying Guthrie's epic scores. The combat is meant to draw you into the music, which draws you into the environment, which draws you deeper into the rabbit hole of the story, and you are left with an experience you remember like the first time you were read a fantasy while warmly tucked into bed, drifting off to dream about that very same fantasy. The game can be beat in five hours, and its motivations are to rescue the magical Sylvans so you can continue your travel and find pieces of the Trigon. I believe a homage to the Triforce from the Zelda franchise. The real ponderance of the game are the puzzles, purposefully and perfectly placed to produce a penchant for probing deeper into the environment. This game oozes atmosphere and tells a story in a way I'd not before experienced. I was pleasantly surprised when I found out the game was actually featured and digested in a digital art class at the University of Toronto. High praise indeed, Bastion. An action RPG that doesn't ignore story is rare indeed. The melodious narrator rocks comments on your every action in combat and even the mistakes you make in a play-by-play -play method and the world puts itself together in front of you bit by bit as Rux, in a deep western style voice, comments on you, the kid, and your discoveries. From the type of enemies, weapons, and areas you encounter to the non-combative NPCs you run into, everyone gets top-notch commentary. The setting, Solandia's story, evolves in a creepy, odd venue that contrasts the bright canvas of each level. This really pulls you into the world of Bastion in a way no action RPG has ever done for me in the past, regardless of expensive cutscenes and voice acting, and that's how it's earned its spot, rightfully, on this list. Shadowrun Dragonfall My favorite of the new Shadowrun games, Dragonfall starts off with both feet briskly spinning on the ground. Of all the games in the franchise, the NPCs that join you have a lot of personality in this one, more so than the crews of the other installments for sure, and the love that was put into writing them is quite obvious. They follow no cliches and formulas ever present in many lesser RPGs, and each sport a deep background and disposition that aren't forced on you, but you'll find yourself happily exploring nonetheless. Your skills allow for multiple approaches to dialogue and problem solving. The classes aren't set in stone either, and you can create your own, and there are many dialogue-driven skills and even etiquettes which are represented as background knowledge of subsisting societies like military and street gangs. The game teases you with dialogue options that are not available to you which make you second guess your chosen class and skills, and just because some dialogues are tied up to an optional skill doesn't mean it's better than any other choice something I quickly found out the hard way. A deep, dark, and often funny cyberpunk story that has vivid flavors cooked from its rich skills, options, and dialogue trees, the story is very satisfying through and through. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. A bit of a disclaimer, this game is older, 
and was released in a rushed, broken state. And in my opinion, you absolutely need to take advantage of the passionate modding community to quote unquote fix the game and bring it up to par. Luckily, there are also some great fidelity overhauls to come along with these fixes, and this wondrous community produces them quite well. You can find these mods at the Nexus at nexusmods.com slash vampire bloodlines. There are stats, skills, and clans to choose from when you're making your character, and they all have meaningful outcomes in your gameplay. I highly suggest the insane Malkavian clan for your first playthrough. Some of the dialogue tied to these nutters is absolutely astoundingly hilarious and creepy, and the NPC's reaction to what you say are equally proportionate and unexpected. Now this doesn't mean that the Malkavians are the best, I just really enjoy them. The other clans play equally, unique, and differently in their own right. The politics in the vampire realm is deep and surprising. You get thrown into a large story and feel overwhelmed, but not in a petrifying way. You have a few main factions to side with in a vampiric war that plays out differently based on your choices. The pacing of the quest is fantastic and never repetitive, which is something that many AAA titles of today could learn from. You could follow the main story directly, but the more you explore, the more you learn about the backstory, and in a way that almost blurs the line between the main story and side quests. I love that feeling. When everything is equally important, it reminds me of my pen and paper RPG days, a feeling this game was intended to do, and succeeds at fantastically. The only downside to this amazing experience is an odd turn in the combat late game that requires a certain aspect of your build, and if you haven't allowed for it, you very likely could get stuck, so I suggest spending a little time I'm researching on how to avoid this. Torment Planescape, created by Black Isle Studios. They also made Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, and the Pillars of Eternity series. If you haven't heard of it, that's good. You now have a new game to play. Pillars of Eternity is a newer game, and it's also featured in my top RPG video, so you can see it there. Torment Planescape was released in 1999. It's a classic wake up and figure out who you are tale that starts pretty quickly but veers off of formula right away. You are an immortal being called the Nameless One trying to find out who you are and why you can't die, and much of it is tied to your past lives. Along the way, you can ask many people to help you, and all, every single one of the NPCs have very different unique stories, and they vary a hundredfold. Like Morty, a floating skull with a quick, funny wit, or a succubus who focuses on intense pleasure that she finds from intellectual stimulation in your perverts. I cannot stress more how every dialogue encounter is unique and deeply story driven. Absolutely no one you meet will be boring, and the ways of which you can convince them to help you, and the methods they choose to do so, will have you running off and telling your friends about. They probably won't even believe that what you're saying is from a video game and not a book. However, there is a lot of text to read. It's extremely well written, but those who refuse to read, well, you really shouldn't be watching this video. It's about stories. Come on. A lot of backstory is unexplained at first, and it takes a few hours to get into it, but the descriptions written within are amazingly unique. Something voice work just wouldn't be able to portray to you. Absolutely nothing in a game is obviously black and white good or evil. There's nothing I appreciate more than a morally ambiguous decision which I cannot immediately see the outcome of only to reload and try again for the good guy options. A bit of a spoiler, as the nameless one you cannot die completely but through every death you lose memories of your past lives and your exploration will reveal many past lives. You can gain fantastic one of a kind abilities through dialogue and talk your way in and out of things you never would have thought possible in video games and you can even decide what your intent is. I remember the first time I saw what looked like two identical dialogues options and then I realized both were parenthesized with my intent to either bluff or be honest with what I'm saying. There are quite often 7 plus dialogue choices, all of which are very interesting. As this is another older game, it suffers a tad from age, but also has great mods. For example, big screen, HUD customization, and texture mods. And the combat takes a bit of a backseat to its amazing, memorable story. But that's what we're here for after all, and that's why it makes number one. And that's it guys. This story-driven non-AAA top 5 was brought to you by Firewatch, a brand new game that came out today and is very story driven. Go check it out and any of these games that you've not heard of before if you want to get into a really deep story. Have yourself a great day. Thanks kindly. Bye bye. Thanks for watching guys. On the left, my top 5 RPGs and on the right, my exposition of Dark Flame, a great indie game. Check them out. Bye bye.